Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to crochet this rib sweater. I'll be making this sweater in a size small, but you can find the free ribbon pattern linked below in the description bar. It ranges from sizes extra small to 5 extra large. You will need DK or Light 3 yarn. I'm using Wee Crochets and Dean Treasure in the colour Dogwood Heather. The yarn amounts for all the different sizes are in the blog post. A 5mm crochet hook, a darning needle, some stitch markers or safety pins, and some scissors. We're going to start with the back panel and to begin, create a slip knot. We're going to chain 78. For this project, all of the panels are worked lengthways. So the foundation chain runs the length of the sweater, not the width. Once you have 78 chains, we're going to double crochet into the third chain from the hook. To double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Double crochet in each chain until the end of the row. You should have 76 stitches in total. Turn your work. Start row 2, chain 1. We're now going to work into the back loops of the double crochets. So the back loop is the loop furthest away from you. We're going to slip stitch in each back loop until the last stitch. Keep your slip stitches nice and loose. When you're at the last stitch, slip stitch into the last stitch of the row. Turn your work. For rows 3 and 4, we're going to repeat row 2. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the end of the row. Throughout this pattern, the turning chains of chain 1 and chain 2 don't count as a stitch. and then slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. You should have 76 stitches in total. The majority of this pattern is made up of the same two rows, so I'll refer to row 2 as the base slip stitch row, and row 5 as the base double crochet row. To start row 5, chain 2. We're going to back loop double crochet into each stitch until the last stitch of the row. And if you rotate your work, you can see how the ribbing will fall lengthways down the body. Double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You should have 76 stitches in total. Turn your work. Repeat rows 2 to 5 until the end of row 93. Once you're at the end of row 93, fasten off. For the front panel, we're going to follow the exact same instructions for the back panel until the end of row 34. At the end of row 34, you should have just completed a slip stitch row. We're now going to start with the neckline shaping. So for the first row of the neckline shaping, we're going to chain 1 and then back loop slip stitch in each stitch until you have 9 stitches left in the row. You should have 67 stitches in total. Turn your work. To start row 2 of the neckline shaping, chain 1 and do another base slip stitch row. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row and then turn your work. To begin row 3 of the neckline shaping, we're going to repeat another base double crochet row. 
So chain 2, back loop double crochet in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. And then double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You should have 67 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 4 of the neckline shaping, we'll repeat another base slip stitch row. At this point, you should have 38 rows in total. To start row 5 of the neckline shaping, chain 1, back loop slip stitch until you have 3 stitches left. You should have 64 stitches and 39 rows in total. Turn your work. For row 6, repeat a base slip stitch row. For row 7, repeat a base double crochet row. For row 8, repeat a base slip stitch row. You should still have 64 stitches and then 42 rows in total. To start row 9, you're going to chain 1 and then back loop slip stitch until you have 2 stitches left in the row. You'll have 62 stitches in total. Turn your work. To start row 10, Repeat the base slip stitch row. For row 11, repeat the base double crochet row. For rows 12 to 14, repeat the base slip stitch row. You should still have 62 stitches in total. And then for row 15, repeat the base double crochet row. And this is what the decrease of the neckline looks like. For row 16, repeat the base slip stitch row. You should have 62 stitches and 50 rows in total. For row 17, we're now going to start with the neckline increase. To begin, chain 1, back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. Chain 3. In total you should have 62 stitches plus 3 chains and then turn your work. To start row 18 of the neckline, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in the next chain. Back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. You should have 64 stitches in total. Turn your work. For row 19, repeat the base double crochet row. For row 20, repeat the base slip stitch row. You should have 64 stitches and 54 rows in total. To begin row 21, we're going to chain 1 and then back loop slip stitch across.
slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. And then chain 4. You should have 64 stitches plus 4 chains. Turn your work. To start row 22, we're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in the next two chains. And then back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. You should have 67 stitches in 56 rows in total. For row 23, repeat the base double crochet row. For row 24, repeat the base slip stitch row. At the end of the row, you should have 67 stitches and 58 rows in total. To start row 25, chain 1. Back loop slip stitch in each stitch across. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. Chain 10. and turn your work. You should have 67 stitches and 10 chains in total. To start row 26, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in each chain. And then back loop slip stitch in each stitch until the last stitch of the row. Slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. You should have 76 stitches and 60 rows in total. Turn your work. For row 27, repeat the base double crochet row. At the end of the row, you should have 76 stitches and 61 rows in total. And now you're going to repeat rows 2 to 5 until the end of row 93. So you'll have 3 rows of the base slip stitch row, and then 1 row of the base double crochet row. At the end of row 93, fasten off. We're now going to crochet the sleeves. To begin, create a slip knot. Chain 69. To start row 1, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch into the next 11 chains. So you should have 12 slip stitches in total. Double crochet in each chain until the end. You'll have 68 stitches in total. Turn your work. For rows 2 to 4, we're going to repeat the base slip stitch row. So chain 1, back loop slip stitch in each stitch across. When working into the slip stitches at the end of the row, make sure to rotate your work so the tops of the stitches are facing you to make it easy to spot the back loops.
slip stitch in the last stitch of the row and turn. At the end of row 4 you'll have 68 stitches in total. To start row 5, chain 1. Back loop slip stitch in the first 12 stitches. And then back loop double crochet in each stitch across. And double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You should have 68 stitches in total. Turn your work. You'll notice that the 12 slip stitches at the beginning of row 5 make one end of the sleeve skinnier than the other. This end will form the cuff of the sleeve while the wider end will form the armhole. Repeat rows 2 to 5 until the end of row 57. At the end of row 57, fasten off. Fold your sleeve in half lengthways, so that the wrong side is facing you. And you can tell it's the wrong side because it'll be smooth with no ribbing. Whip stitch the long edge of your sleeve together. Repeat these steps for a second sleeve. We're now going to assemble the sweater. So place the front panel on top of the back panel, making sure that the wrong side is facing outwards, and we're going to sew along the tops of the shoulder seams. For a neat finish, make sure that the ribbing matches on the right side. Whip stitch the tops of the shoulders together. For the sweater to look its best, make sure you have even stitches, and make sure to insert your needle into the middle of the stitches for a neat finish. We're now going to whip stitch up the sides of the sweater, making sure to leave a gap for the sleeves. When sewing the sides of the body together, I like to pick up the back loops of the stitches for a neat finish. Sew the sleeves to the body of the sweater. Once we've sewn everything together, we're now going to crochet the neckline ribbing. To begin, create a slip knot. Chain 7. To start row 1, we're going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in each chain until the end of the row. You should have 6 stitches in total. Turn your work. To start row 2, chain 1. Back loop slip stitch in each stitch across. And then slip stitch in the last stitch of the row. Turn your work. Repeat row 2 until the ribbing can fit around the neckline. And it'll measure approximately 41 centimeters or 16 inches long. Fasten off. With the right side of the sweater facing you, we're now going to sew the ribbing to the neckline. So fold your ribbing in half and line up the fold with the center of the neckline. Use stitch markers to pin your ribbing in place. 
Pin your ribbing so it makes a smooth curve along the edge of the neckline. Don't worry if the corners of the increases and decreases poke up behind the ribbing. They won't be visible once we sew the ribbing in place. Once your ribbing is pinned in place, whip stitch the edges of the ribbing to the neckline. When you reach the increases and decreases, sew over the corners of the sweater and they'll form small bumps that won't be visible once you wear your sweater. Once you've sewn the ribbing to the neckline, sew the ends of the ribbing together. And this is what your finished neckline ribbing will look like from the right side. And then if you look inside, you can notice that the small bumps are still there, but they won't be visible at all once you wear the sweater. You can leave your sweater as is, or you can also attach body ribbing. For the body ribbing, you're going to follow the exact same instructions as the neckline ribbing but you're going to chain 9 and have 8 stitches in total. You'll repeat the rows of back loop slip stitches until your ribbing equals the width of the front and back panel. Once you've finished your ribbing, simply whip stitch it to the hemline edge of the sweater. Steam and block your pullover. And now you've finished your Amalfi rib sweater.